Hey, hope you guys are doing well. Edgar from Solo Marketer here, and in this video, I want to quickly show you how to set up automations on System.io and what kind of automations there are, and basically what you can do with them. That's a really vital feature, and it's going to come in handy basically with everything you do on System.io. That's kind of I like to call it the glue that keeps everything together. Uh, but yeah, I just want to show you what the big differences are on all kinds of elements that are in, uh, involved. So just in general, just so you know, when you go to automations over here in your system.io account, uh, if you have a free account, I think you get one automation for free. And then if you have a paid account, you can get even unlimited if you have a, one of the expensive plans. And, uh, but yeah, just so you know, there's two kinds of automations. There's rules and think of rules, something like, uh, it's really simple. It's uh, It's basically if then. So if this happens, then this will happen. Uh, let's say if someone uh, fills out for this form, then they get tagged. Or if uh, someone pays for this thing, then they uh, get added to this community, right? If then, if then. And uh, yeah, basically what it looks like if we click on rules, if we click on create, there's the trigger and then there's the action. That's the if or when this happens, then do this. That's another way to phrase it, right? And over here, you can see a list. So this is the... The kind of the the classic way you can set things up right you can just open it i know what i want to do you just go in you set it up and there's another easier way where you can do this within the funnel so we're going to take a look at that as well but this is the first way uh, where essentially funnel step form filled out that kind of makes sense right they filled out a specific form let's say on your landing page and that could be a trigger also a tag got added tag removed right those are kind of self-explanatory as well because you need to tag your contacts just so you know what they're basically where they're coming from what their activity levels are you know what they have purchased those things you want to tag as much as possible and you can do that with the help of automations uh, obviously yeah blog form subscribe campaign completed uh, register to webinar all of these elements <laughs> the webinar element comes in only starting from the webinar plan or the unlimited as far as i remember yeah on the free plan and the startup plan that's not an option well it is an option but it's you can't set up a webinar yeah same here trigger <clears throat> enrolled in a course it could be something like they're enrolled in a course then you can add them to a community which is another feature in, in system.io or if they complete a course send them a uh, gift right so that can be another thing or like a certificate uh, module completed same thing so you can send them an email uh, enrolled in course bundle course bundle is just basically a, a bundle of courses i mean it, it is what it is it's just you can put in like several courses in one just kind of put them all together uh yeah enrolled in community so this is all kind of makes sense right if they make a new sale then you can tag them for example right sale canceled then you can untag them and these are kind of relatively new if an email gets open or email link is clicked uh, those are important activities. Those are your, your warm or hot leads. Those are the active leads because the very often majority of your leads will, after some period of time, they'll just stop opening your emails, right? Let's say you got an, an email open rate of 30%. You want to track those people who, who open or click specific emails. So you can, you can have specific tags for those people as well. And page visited, subscription, payment failed. Those are other uh, triggers. So I kind of blitz through them. And the actions are based on those triggers. These are the actions that we're going to take, right? Subscribe them to an email campaign. Let's say they sign up for a, uh, for a lead magnet, right? And at the same time, you send them to a uh, campaign where the first email is um, they receive a, a freebie. And then the next string of emails with like, can, you can send them like five emails, like a welcome sequence, right? Also, you can tag them, obviously, if they sign up for a freebie, tag them. If they purchase, tag them, do all that stuff. Uh, and you can send them email just like that, which uh, is, is a good way to do it as well. If you're delivering a freebie, they sign up for a form, that's the trigger. And then the, uh, the action is send email. And when that email, there's a link to your freebie, video, PDF, uh, template, checklist, spreadsheet, whatever it is, right? And this one, send email to a specific address. This would be related to if somebody signs up for something or purchases something, then the, uh, the action could be you personally, that specific, send email to a specific email address. That could be your email address and you get a notification, hey, this happened. So this is where you like craft a short email uh, what actually you would be receiving based on some certain trigger that happened. Somebody made a purchase, right? Or somebody signed up for something. And these are all simple, filled out a free form, enroll in a course, free course, right? Send webhook, that's more advanced. I'm not gonna talk about that one. Yeah, revoke access to a course. 
the rest. Yeah, community, and role course bundle, <clears throat> all pretty straightforward, right? Oftentimes connected to the, whether they sign up through a uh, form, they purchase something, right? Or they get tagged or they complete an email campaign. You put them in a new email campaign, just all kinds of things, right? You can do. So that is, those are the actions that you can do. Also, you can do these uh, rules, automations. You can do them on a funnel level, just so you know. Let's say there's a basic sales funnel and you can do them here, automation rules. This is where you can set them up. Add rule, sale happen. This is where it narrows it down only to this funnel's specific functions. This doesn't say anything about, oh, a campaign got completed, right? It finished and then something needs to happen. This is more specific just to that. So depending on what your funnel type is, so this is related to sales. Let's say there's a lead generation funnel. So automation rules will be related to that, right? Funnels that form subscribed or a page visited. This has nothing to do with sales because it's a different type of page. It's a squeeze page. So this is really nice. The automation rules within the funnel itself, it makes it easier. Unless you're really experienced, you just know that you just go to automations and you quickly set it up. But if you're still kind of trying to grasp the whole concept of automations, this is easier. It's better to do it on this funnel level. Or also if you're within the squeeze page, well, let's just do it quickly. Just like a one last side note on this this type of automation. If you're on the squeeze page, let's edit the page. And for this button, let's say, right, you click on the button where they submit the form. You can do it here as well. Add automation rule. This is a relatively newer function as well. I mean, it's not as new anymore. It's been a few months, but add automation rule. And here you can add the action, right? So you can do all these things within the page, within the funnel, or just go to automations uh, uh, location over here up top where we started. So that's kind of the overview of the rules. Auto I just call them automations, but they're kind of called rules because that's just a simple when this happens, when this triggers, this needs to happen. So the workflows, that's a more advanced thing. So if we click on the workflows and we want to create one, uh, let's just do, I don't know, test save there's different types of things uh, also yeah after before i i'm gonna forget this after you finish creating a workflow you see status is inactive after you finish it you want to activate it i might forget to say this in the end because i sometimes i forget to activate them so yeah this is important you work on it once it's done activate it but yeah let's go in uh, we still need to create it so now it loaded in uh the beginning is same as usual it's a trigger but uh, yeah, it can be a tag added, right? There's a tag. It can be multiple triggers. So that's the that's kind of a, a thing as well to, to note. Multiple triggers. Uh, funnel form subscribed. Uh, I don't know. Squeeze page. This, right? Either this or that or just like different types of things. Let's say you have like six different landing pages. All of them will be a trigger to be put into like an email sequence. So these are the triggers up top. You can put a row of them. I have uh, like a workflow like this that has like 20 triggers, right? For 20 different funnels. So you can just have them all lined up over here. With the plus button, you can just keep adding more. And then uh, below the triggers, there's three types of uh, steps. There can be action, which is kind of like what, what we did for the rules, right? That's just an action that's gonna happen. Decision, which is kind of a split, it's either yes or a no, and uh, also a delay, which just means, let's say you're sending, I don't know, maybe this is not the best example, but let's say you're sending emails, right? You send out an email, delay of one day, send out an email, delay of one day, send out an email. Maybe not the best example, because I would just do it on a campaigns themselves, but just as an example, yeah, you can do somebody signs up, wait for, I don't know, one hour, right? That's the delay function, and then you can do an action right? An action, uh, send an email, for example, right? Or subscribe to a campaign or send an email. Those are the two options that if you want to send an email. Uh, also, you can do, I don't know, something like decision, uh, if maybe depending on whether, uh, I don't know, activity. Let's just do something like this. Maybe, yeah, maybe it could be something like, uh, is, does the contact have the purchase tag? right? Create. Let's remove this. They signed up for something. And then after that page, you're offering them to buy something, right? And then you wait an hour and you see, have they bought this thing? If they have bought it, yes, then it ends, right? They, they are tagged with this. That means they have purchased something. That's an extra automation. Uh, if they haven't, then you can send them to an email campaign, right? Subscribe to campaign. 
and the campaign, whatever the campaign is, right? And then you put them in a campaign because if they have purchased, you don't need to keep selling to them. But if they haven't purchased, you can put them in an email campaign, which this doesn't, the name doesn't represent it properly. But let's say this is an email campaign where you keep selling the same product that they didn't buy from different angles. So this is just one example to do it. It's a pretty common one. That's where the decision aspect comes in. So yeah, you can see there's like a, uh, you can create more elaborate flows. It's not as much anymore as a, when this triggers, this happens, right? You can still do it in workflows, but I would just do a basic rule uh, as an automation, as opposed to this. This is for more advanced systems. And then maybe after this, you can do like another delay, right? You can do like a string of like a complicated chain of when the same thing kind of if then, but uh, a little bit more flexibility. And, and what kind of what what can happen, what can happen. So this gives you this is more of a thing to kind of experiment with. You need to kind of see what what your what you have, what kind of tags you have, what kind of pages you have, and basically how you can optimize your processes. Right? I can just exclude all of this, but then I'm going to get less sales because all these people they didn't buy, and then yeah, that's it. They're on my list. Or I can set up this workflow, and then they get put in this email sequence, and some of them will buy on top of these people that bought already. So it's just another way to optimize your processes and have, let's say from a hundred people, instead of five buyers have like seven buyers, right? Just as an example, just because I added this extra workflow. So yeah, that's kind of the short version. I try to keep it as short as possible because automations can be overwhelming, but yeah, just to kind of summarize everything. If we go back to automations and rules, I would do these things, right? You can just set them up here, but I would do them on a funnel level. You're setting up a sales page, immediately go check out your order form. What are the automation rules that you can do? Let's add a rule, a, a sale happened, right? Or just, I don't know, funnel step form subscribed, like the two-step order form, right? So there's, and then you can do a cart and abandonment sequence. So I would do, do these on a funnel level because they only give you the options that are that can be applied to this funnel they don't give you all the extras right the whole long list uh, same thing goes for like squeeze pages and, and whatever else or webinar sign up pages and the other one workflows those are more elaborate again see i set it up so in the end i need to activate it right and only now it's active only now it's going to trigger it's going to fire it's going to uh, do the actions you told it to do. And at any moment, you can deactivate it as well if you don't want it to work anymore. So yeah, this is, uh, it's quite a bit. Go play around with it. If you have any questions, you can add them in the comments below. Also, there's a couple of uh, freebie funnel templates, if you like, completely free. They come with instructional videos. There's some more like the, there's a sales page template. There's a, uh, there should be a lead generation, like a landing page template as well with a welcome email and an instructional video and a, all that stuff. So go check it out. I'll show you how to connect it all together. If you're still struggling, uh, you don't need to recreate stuff from zero, right? This is the, this, this is not something that always needs to be recreated from scratch. You can take someone else's foundation and then make it yours, but replace the text, replace the images, kind of rearrange things as opposed to just having a blank sheet of paper and then getting stuck because it's just, it's, it's too much. So go check those out. Any questions, comments below. Um, but yeah, if you don't have any questions, I will see you in the next video. Bye.